It's Tommy Coward here on the lawn with you and I'm at my mom's house and I just want to show you this is part of the bonsai episode or bonsai. Uh, this little specimen here that I potted up recently. This is a collection. This is a uh, bonsai material collection I'm experimenting with. This is a Paolau Nia tree. And if you could see, I collected it from here. Right here by the hose bib. And look what came back. Some of this, this is only two weeks worth of growth. The Paolau Nia tree is an amazing tree. Apparently, it's called a princess tree. This is a bonsai in work, in progress. That's a, a collection. That's about a year old tree that actually grew up above the roof line in two years. And the Polonia is becoming very popular here in the United States as a timber product. And I uh, tell you what, man, it's pretty cool. I collected that last year, and uh, or back in the winter, and we're getting a lot of growth on it. I'll be able to start you know, it's going to be a few years before this thing can actually be, you know, start to train it and work on styling. Uh, just going to let it grow up. But it has medicinal purposes to it. It's great for timber. Uh, it's the cradle to grave of uh, Chinese timber products. Now, in China, they now have a chestnut blight type of problem on this tree which is uh, hurting. There's my mom coming on out on the deck. But uh, that's a collection. Uh, that's just one. Okay. Tommy signing out. I'll show you the rest of my stuff. All right, folks. Bonsai collecting. Here's one I collected. It's already been bonsai. This is a crepe myrtle. It's just coming out of dormancy. This thing has been pruned over the years by deer. They have just eaten it down. It's just now starting to bud out. But it's been kept at a height. That's the height that it originally kept. You know, when you're looking for bonsai, bonsai material to collect, you look around your garden and see what you can find. Um, this guy right here, this is a red bud tree. The key in looking for bonsai material, bonsai material, I'm going to have to get that. I love bone bonsai. Tear it up, man, you know. You want to find that nabari, which is that root, where the root meets the soil and you look for something that can be interesting these are some crepe myrtles I collected that one and this guy right here and I was looking at that nabari you know this thing could be a spectacular plant at some time this is all bonds bonsai material that I collected this is a black dragon cryptomeria stump this thing was full grown. It was probably 12 feet tall when I dug it out. It's still alive. We're going to hope to get some bud break on it. And this guy right here. It's got an interesting uh, base to it. You see that Nabari down there? You know, I want that in the pot. I want that sticking up. This guy right here, you know, these roots, these surface roots. That's a crepe myrtle I got. And you know, you dig them out in the winter time. I'm going to go back to this guy. You don't know what the front is going to be yet. And you can see I've got some gnarly cuts. And even up here, gnarly cut. That can be chiseled away later. That could actually be ground down. This guy right here. You know, once you get them, I want them big. I'm going to walk you around. Hey, pot man. You know, I'm letting some weeds grow up, but we let Doug come back here, our bunny, and he cleans up the weeds. And snow in summer, Asiatic jasmine, and that, that's a giant hosta. 
This is a little bed that I created here. Got some more of your videos. We're growing some beans up here. Um, I want to show you this wisteria that uh, I collected from the woods. And you know, this is my kind of bonsai right here. Bonsai. That's a pine. This guy right here is a pine. Long needle pine that I collected from a uh, trade show. Forestry department was giving them out. But basically, uh, you know, when you're collecting bonsai material, um, I'll take you over here. I like to grow them myself. Check it out. Nasturtium flowers. Mm, and I love eating that <clears throat> right off the vine. I like growing them. And if you go back to an earlier video, these were some sand beds and potting these guys up <clears throat> here. And I'll just do them in these uh, Coke trays lined with some uh, burlap. Make this hoop house out of it. These are all flushing out. This is some, uh, these are basically osmanthus plants, and I've even got some Yopon holly in here, um, some spireas. But I'll be potting those guys up. I've already potted up the, uh, some black dragon cryptomeria cuttings. These guys survive the winter. There's another, uh, another pine I collected from, uh, the <laughs> the forestry department was giving out these cuttings. Here's some more cuttings. Those are some uh, Pieris japonica. And these are some specimens that I, I feel really lucky that I got. This guy right here is a hemlock tree. Uh, this thing is capable of getting you know, like 50 feet tall. And uh, has great nabari. Go down in here and look. I'm getting ready to put that in. I'm going to move this guy to this pot. This guy, this is a American Elm. Almas Americana. And uh, I love the elms, especially the ones that survived. And you know what? I don't have any real good pots yet. That's a crock pot. This is a pot that's kind of oriental. This is a little uh, kind of a keepsake pot. It was a hanging basket pot. And I cut it large drainage holes in each one of them that did house a uh bonsai from last year I'm, so i'm going to end this video i want to show you this is a little these are some river birch trees that grew up in a pot at my mom's house and i took the five and put them in here and this is just training this is a training pot for a forest planting here you know i'm hoping i can keep picking away at the leaves i'm learning a lot um, these are some Yopon holly I just dug out from a, a neglected landscape. As you can see how dry this is. I'm sure they were pot bound when uh, they were planted. But look down here. There's some potential in the shape here and in the bari. I mean, I can do something with these guys. Pot them up, grow them out for about a year. And uh, cut away all the dead, leave some dead, show him bonsai type stuff. Um, there's some growth, and these are yopons. So I'm going to be you know, rescuing them, so to speak. Now, um, to end the video, I want to show you some disaster. We had an extremely cold, cold, cold winter. And uh, I lost some bonsai. This one, this guy right here, he, he was, as you can see, I already had this thing wired. This thing was beautiful. I may even had it in a, it died. It died from cold. Here was an awesome bonsai, bonsai I had. And two of these beech trees died from cold damage. This thing right here, I had for him, I had him for about eight years. And he passed. 
Uh, these guys were a couple years old, and this guy I had for about 10 years. He died in the cold. And, uh, you know, that's just a shame that that happens. But anyway, that's uh, collecting bonsai material. What you're after is this nabari, the root flare of the tree. You know, look for that. And then I believe a lot of folks uh, feel like trees could be damaged by uh, whatever hit them. You know, all kinds of uh, storm damage can take a twig and rip it. And when you start to style, you know, you're looking for nature. What happened to that tree in nature? This guy was beautiful, man. It had an interesting nabari, and then it had this little leg sticking up like that, and it was beautiful. Of course, the cold killed it. But, uh, you know, nabari is the key. You find your front, whatever your front's going to be, and then uh, you miniaturize a tree. And that's kind of what bonsai is. It's, uh, you know, what's your front? You know, you start playing with these things. These could take 10, 15, 20, 30 years to develop into something. You know, you start with some cuttings and uh, of plants you love. I love the cryptomeria. And then you um, develop that over time. And, uh, you know... That's how you do it. Boonsai, baby. Collect your own stuff. Tommy Cowett signing out.